What's up, buddy? How you doing? How you feeling? Hope you're feeling good. I don't feel good. I feel weird making this video. This was a video that I was like, well, I don't really want to comment on this for a number of reasons. A number of reasons. One, uh, I don't normally cover this kind of news, this kind of weird gaming space, YouTuber, what YouTubers are doing wrong, YouTuber apologies. There's a lot of YouTube apologies. Scraps, I just started the video. 10 seconds into the video. Do you really? <laughs> I'm trying to do the intro, and you immediately show up and put your butthole in the camera. Just go do anything else. Why is your timing like this? I'm going to blow my brains out. Please. <laughs> but I want to talk about this story because I find it very interesting. The more I dig into it, the, the crazier it gets. Now, I'll, I'll cut right to the chase. We're talking about a guy named Gerard the Completionist. He is one of these gaming YouTubers, big gaming YouTuber. I believe he has over a million followers or close to a million followers. Uh, and this guy has been a big uh, personality in this gaming space. Runs a big channel, famously was tapped to help reboot the G4 television network. We saw what a debacle that was. He was actually one of the guys who came out of it unscathed, though. Even though everybody was kind of mad at the G4 crew for destroying that channel, they went, well, Gerard's not part of the problem because Gerard is a good guy. And at the end of the day, that's kind of what we're talking about. Uh, and that's why this story is so interesting to me. It's this good guy archetype. Okay, the idea of you watch a guy on the internet, he's a fun guy, he's funny, he's so nice to everybody, he's always got a nice thing to say, uh, and you start to develop this kind of parasocial relationship with him where you think, well, this guy can do no wrong, I watch this guy every day. Every day I turn on my phone or I turn on my laptop and I watch this guy's videos, and you start to feel like you know this person, you start to feel like they're a part of your life. You start to think, you know, if you saw him at a party, you could walk up to him and go, Gerard, we've been friends for 10 years. And he goes, I have no idea who you are. And you go, well, I watch your videos. So it's basically the same thing. People develop these relationships with these good guys on YouTube, these influencers. And uh, what they don't understand is that these guys are very clearly putting on an act. Okay? You're seeing one-tenth of them. Let's be clear, this applies to me as well. And if you if you watch my videos and you think I'm a nice guy, hopefully you know I'm an asshole at this point. I think you've, most of you have figured that out. But I'm probably even worse than what you could imagine, okay? Behind the scenes, I'm you know, I'm not going to say I'm a monster. I've never killed anybody. But, you know, I yell at people. I lose my temper. I'll have a bad day. We're not perfect people, okay? Us on YouTube, we try to put our best face forward, but we all have flaws. The problem is when guys like Gerard start to believe their own hype. They start to believe the people around them telling them, you're incredible, you're a good guy, you've never done anything wrong. And that allows them to justify certain things. It allows them to justify acting badly, uh, lying to their audience, certain things like that. Because they go, well, at the end of the day, everybody knows I'm a good guy. Everybody thinks I'm a good guy. So I can lie, I can cheat, I can steal, and that's fine. That's the story we're talking about. We're talking about a good guy. A good guy with millions of followers. Everybody loved this guy. And uh, this past week or so, he's ripped the mask away so intensely that it's it's baffling. And has shown everyone that he's kind of an asshole, that he's kind of a scum, not kind of an asshole, that he's a true scumbag. All right, we're going to get into it. Guys, hit that subscribe button down there, and I'll give you a quick overview of what's been going on. Now, this guy, Gerard, real quick, and I'll look it up, has a charity called the Open Hand Foundation. Uh, it's not real. Well, I don't know if you call it a charity or a organization. I don't know exactly what you call it, but basically they raise funds to give to other charities, right? I believe it was started by Gerard's dad, but obviously Gerard is a huge influencer and he's kind of taken the charge in fundraising money. Gerard's mother died of dementia. So what they do is they go out, they hold these charity fundraisers, they raise the funds. And what they're supposed to do is take the money that they've raised and give it to other dementia charities. Here's the problem. Gerard, for the past 10 years or so, his primary way of raising money for this Open Hound Foundation was something called IndieLand. This is a yearly streaming event where a bunch of gamers get together. They all hang out on a couch and play video games. And look at that. $37,000 already raised. Uh, some years raising as much as $80,000. Donating to a number of benefactors, which we can see, even see on their website. Uh, benefactors such as the University of California, San Francisco. He mentions a variety of other uh, charity places they donate to. Just a good guy helping everybody out. Here's the problem, okay? And this was exposed by two YouTubers, Carl Jobst, uh, who you should be following, 
as well. Why am I not? Fo oh, this is my other account. Uh, wait, am I not following this guy? Join? I think I have to pay money to join, right? Is that different? I thought I was already subscribed. To I must have clicked the wrong button. I love Carl. Carl just came on our podcast, by the way. Biggest problem in the universe. Go watch his episode. Point is, Carl, great investigative. He doesn't call himself a journalist, but let's be clear. This is investigative journalism, Carl, and he did a great job, along with Mudahar, also known as Some Ordinary Gamers, somehow found out that of the $600,000-plus that have been raised over the past 10 years, $0 have been donated to the charities that Gerard mentions constantly. Constantly mentions. Every one of these indie lands, he goes, here's the five or six different organizations your money is going to. Every single donation and bit and whatever, tchotchke, super chat, whatever else, all of it goes to charity. We have found out that is not the truth. Now, the reason that this story originally I went, well, this is not great, but it also could be not as bad as Carl and Muda are saying. And the reason I said that is because according to filing documents, all the money that's been raised is sitting in a bank account somewhere. So it's not like he took the money and went and bought himself a car and bought himself a new house. He collected donation money and then for some reason had it just sitting in a bank account not being donated. Okay, now that's a big problem. It's not good. It's very, it could have been worse, but it's not good to collect that money and constantly tell your audience, we're donating your money. Every dollar you give us is going to this research. It's going to these organizations when in reality it's rotting away in a bank account. OK, and for those of you who know anything about money, OK, especially now we're in an era of rampant inflation. If they had donated that money back when it was first donated, it would have been worth more. Across time, six hundred thousand dollars ten years ago is worth way more than six hundred thousand now. So the money that was being donated, one, was not going to any charities, two, has been depreciating in a bank account, and three, and most importantly, that on every single stream and in tweets and whatever else, uh, Gerard has said, we are donating money to these organizations. We are doing so much good in the world, despite knowing and admitting that he knew the money was not going to any charities. The explanation, this was an email sent to Carl. They said, hey, how come the money's not getting donated? And the charity responds with, as we actively search for a partnership that meets our high standards, we recommend any recom we welcome any recommendations you might have for potential benefactors. Could you recommend any organizations or research entities that share our vision and keep but be potential collaborators in advancing our mission? Do you understand how insane an email this is? Okay. When a journalist reaches out to you and goes, Why have you not donated charity money? You need an answer. And the answer can't be, well, who do you think we should donate it to? That's not Carl's job. That's your job. You are you are a uh, charity that has been around for 10 years and assumedly know far more about dementia research than the journalist who is contacting you. The fact that you're going, well, who do you think we should give it to? It, it isn't even comical. It's like absurd. It's fucking insanity. I can't believe they sent this back as a fucking email. Now, they managed to get Gerard on a call, and I want to listen to that call real quick, where they confronted him about what was going on, uh, and let's, let's listen to that audio. You weren't notified that the money was sitting there the whole time? I knew it was sitting there mm -hmm. at a certain point, and that's what me made me proactively go about it. Like, I was made aware in 2021 when the, the, the money hadn't moved yet, and that's... That's so important, by the way. I was made aware in 2021 that the money hadn't moved yet. That's two years ago. So in two years, he's had the information that money is not being donated. We're going to circle back to that in a second. I have a couple of tweets I'm going to want to show you, but let's hear the end of this. It made me go, that's not fucking cool. And that's when I got personally involved to move it. And did anyone... 2021, last year, 2022. Yeah, did anyone... Okay, it just changed it from 2021 to 2022. Still... Okay, and he's jumping around. I don't know if he went, oh, I can't say 2021. Let's say 2022. That means in 2022, he was aware that no money was being donated. If that's true, why was he making statements that were saying that it still was being donated? We're going to look at those again in a second. Anyone tell you that the, the, the money was going somewhere before then? Were you being misled? No, 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 no. No one told me anything. I, was, I assumed that it was all going to a charity, and I, I assumed incorrectly. Okay. So when I watched this video when it came out, and I went, okay, 
Well, on the surface, I'm going to try to assume the best of... I'm going to try to assume the best. And the fact that the money hadn't been, you know, moved to somewhere weird, I went, well, it's shady and it's weird. And who knows if they were planning to do something with that money at some point, you know, steal it 20 years from now and everyone's forgotten about it. But I'm going to just assume this guy fucked up. Okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be willing to have, you know, given the benefit of the doubt... Uh, again, on that call, he made it sound like, look, I found out the money wasn't being donated. And again, there's other people involved with the charity. It's possible. I thought another possibility was that his family was like screwing around and dropping the ball, telling him, no, everything's being donated. You're fine. Only for him to find out that that wasn't the case. I was being very charitable to uh, Gerard the completionist until he decided to come out with not even, I don't even think you can call it an apology. It's just called my response. Now, this is 20 minutes long. I'm going to not play the whole thing. We'll have to cut around a little bit. But this video is filled with so many bizarre half-truths, more lies, uh, completely trying to shift the conversation to things that don't even matter at all, and just will not address the fact that he has been blatantly lying for years. Before we watch the video, I want to remind you of two things. One. In that previous uh, audio clip we just watched, he said, I was aware money was not being donated in 2022, and that's when I began looking for someone to donate it to. Yet here he is in 2023 telling someone who asked him why, why he's raising money for you know video game stuff, whatever. He says, I raise a combined total of nearly $600,000 to $750,000 a year for various charities including Doctors Without Borders, the American Heart Association, Dementia Research and Treatment, and St. Jude's Children's Hospital. I'm helping people all the time. So, he knew money was not being donated to Dementia Research and Treatment. He knew that. Not to mention, this total is insane, okay? He, ra he raises for his charity uh, sixty dollars to $80,000 a year, not $750,000. I have no idea where he's getting these crazy numbers. I mean, we look, yes, he's done, you know, occasional fundraisers for St. Jude's Children's Hospital. 13,000, okay? So 13,000 to St. Jude's plus 80,000 Indyland does not get you to 600,000 to 750,000 a year. And we know that you weren't even donating the money to Dementia Research and Treatment. You said that in 2022, you knew money was not being donated. I'm going to say this. This is a guy who loved the uh, perception of being a good guy who donated money to charity. He loved what it did for his reputation. He loved how it made him look. And he loved how, again, he got to play the part of the nice guy. I'm a nice guy. I help charity. I love everyone. I'm just a fun-loving guy. His response, you're going to see an angry, petulant baby mad at the fact that two heroic journalists stepped forward and said, you cannot just sit on $600,000 in donated funds. You need to donate those now. And there's a lot of funds that are not accounted for in your filings, and we don't know where that money is. Rather than go what he should have done and what any, any normal rational person would have done and say, I made a huge mistake. Okay, I need to address this immediately. Clearly, I do not know how to run a charity. I need to apologize to my fans. Uh, I, I was out of my depth. I went too far. I said things, you know, trying to uh, make it sound like I knew what I was doing. But ultimately, I was unprepared for the world of charity fundraising. I'm donating all the money we have now. I'm kicking in some extra money of my own. And moving forward, I will no longer try to run a charity. It's clearly something that is too complex for me. Uh, again, I, I did not mean to mislead people. I had the best of intentions. I truly wanted to help people, but uh, clearly I was unprepared for this venture I set into. Instead, he blames everyone other than himself. He threatens to sue people. Uh, we're going to try and watch. It's frankly hard to watch this. Uh, we're going to watch it and we're going to respond. We're going to pause at times. We'll talk about what he says here. But this is just how to destroy your career in 20 minutes. How to destroy your career in 19 minutes, 20 seconds. That's what this is. And there is no coming back from this. Over the past few weeks, allegations have been made against me, my family, and our charitable organization, the Open Hand Foundation, asserting charity fraud and more. I'm here today to provide clarity and transparency to set the record straight. I want to make it 100% clear. At no point in the Foundation's history was there any criminal or financial fraud. None. Well, here's the thing. 
There is. <laughs> I mean, that's it. Look, here's here's the deal. If people people want to donate money to charity, right? And there's a lot of different charities you can support. So there's somebody out there and they go, I have $100 and I really want to help out a dementia research charity. And I want to find the best one possibly. And they go to something like Open Hand. And they hear statements from Gerard. They hear statements like, we are benefiting all these different organizations. We have raised this much money for dementia research. Give it to us. Trust us with your money. And we will do the best uh, that we can with it, whatever. It's going to go. He, you know, And he has statements saying every single dollar you give us goes to charity. He has statements saying we have donated this many thousands of dollars this year. Those are lies. And lying to someone to get their charity money, it doesn't matter if the $100 eventually gets to charity. The point is that you did not inform that person properly of where their money was going. And if they had the actual information, if you hadn't have lied to them, they might have chosen a different charity, which is their right. You misled them because you wanted the, ch the money to come from your charity. You exaggerated what your charity was doing. You lied about organizations you were w working with. That's fraud, buddy. I also want to touch on why I've been quiet for these last few weeks. A lot of folks have been saying that if I didn't do anything wrong, that I should have said something sooner or that my conversation with the accusers was considered my full side of the story. But when there is allegation after allegation being made, it takes a long time to gather the evidence and facts to refute claims. This will be my only video response on this matter. I can confirm that as of Wednesday, November 29th, 2023, the Open Hand Foundation has donated $600,000 to the Association for Frontotemporal Degeneration. However, it did take too long to get to this moment, and for that, I am sorry. The money is now in good hands to make a lasting impact. For more information on the donation, there will be a link down below that you can check out. That should have been the video. Okay. I'm going to give you guys a PR masterclass. You fucked up. You know you fucked up. There's evidence you fucked up. We have a million statements from you saying money was being donated that are just lies. So you do, this is not your chance to go, they're lying about me, they're accusing me of things that haven't happened, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter. It's possible that they may have made allegations that you can disprove. That's fine. But you still did something wrong. Okay? The best you can say is some of the allegations against me have been uh, overhyped uh, and can be disproven. But you have to follow that up with, however, the fact remains that I screwed up. And that is what we're here to talk about today. That's it. The best, the best you can do is say, now, not everything that has been said about me is true. There have been a lot of exaggerations. There have been a lot of accusations saying that I deliberately was trying to mislead you people. I must assure you that is not true. I'm a good guy. That's what they want to hear. Everyone wants to hear you're a good guy. I'm a good guy who got over my head. Uh, I was not prepared for the world of charity fundraising, and I want to make good by you people. Uh, I screwed up, and that's that's all I want to talk about. We're not going to talk about you know any exaggerations other people have made. We're going to talk about how I'm going to make it right. But instead, this video is, woe is me. How could they accuse me of these horrible things? Well, they're accusing me of these horrible things because $600,000 is missing. I think they have every right to not only be skeptical when, when that vast amount of money is missing, but perhaps make suggestions that you've done something wrong. And the fact that you're going, I don't know how they could say I've done something wrong. All I did was lie to my audience for 10 years and hold $600,000 of their money without donating it. How could they say these horrible? Yeah. People are going to say horrible things about you in that situation. And you just need to accept it. You need to go, I understand people are upset. And though I think some of them are accusing me of things which I have not done, I do want to make it right. To further provide context on the Open Hand Foundation, my mother got sick when I was young. She was diagnosed with frontotemporal degeneration. Don't do this at all. Don't do this at all. Uh, it's transparent. It's obvious. We know your mom's dead. Okay. We're a minute and thirty. We're a minute thirty into the video, and you're already gonna tell me that your mom's dead. And I know why. It's a transparent ploy for sympathy. It's my mom's dead. Feel bad for me, okay? This is a. It's sick. It has nothing. And it honestly, it has nothing to do with this. It has nothing to do with this. Your mother being dead has nothing to do with the fact that six hundred thousand dollars went missing. 
It is irrelevant. It is an obvious ploy for sympathy. And the only reason you're bringing it up is to try and get some people on your side. It, it's frankly, it's, who wrote this apology for you? I would have told them, nope, don't even talk about that because everyone's going to see it for what it is. It is so transparent. A form of dementia that far too often goes undiagnosed or misdiagnosed. Irrelevant. I was 10 years old when signed up. Irrelevant. Just Irrelevant. Up. Doesn't matter. She was officially diagnosed with FTD four years later when I was 14. And she so when because your mother got dementia when you were 14, now you're allowed to steal money. What the fuck? Don't. This is, this is so fuck. See, this is why I didn't want to make this video. I hate these fucking guys. I hate these good guys. Because they're so fucking transparent. Hey, man, why'd you steal all of the charity money? Ten years ago, my mother suffered from a horrible form of dementia. I don't care. I, re I honestly, look, that sucks. I've had, a, I've had a parent die. My father died, okay? It sucks. I get it. Okay? But when I fuck up, when I do something wrong, when someone says, hey, Vito, why'd you steal the last slice of pizza out of the box? I don't go, my father struggled with alcoholism his entire life. I don't do that because that's what a child does. This is infuriating to watch. I when I was 25. Yep. My mom's battle with this disease lasted nearly 15 years. And after experiencing the struggles and hardships of caring for someone with dementia, oh my God. we decided to start a foundation in her honor. Congratulations. Before this, my family had been donating money as well as spending time with my mother, academics, and doctors to help them with their own understanding of FTD. My father runs an annual golf tournament. And this golf event hasn't always contained a charitable component, but has always been in dedication to my mother to bring awareness to FTD. I would often be present at these events, but beyond giving an occasional speech, I was not and still am not involved in any of the event planning. In 2018, I took two things I'm passionate about, indie games and charity work, and started IndieLand to highlight the indie game community and raise money in honor of my mom for a good cause. During several recent IndieLand events, press interviews, and podcasts, I went on record saying where the money was going to and that the Open Hand Foundation had worked with various organizations. At different points, the foundation had been in communication with or considered several of them. Bro. Okay. <laughs> that is... I, I can't even say that's a skillful dodge. That is a terrible dodge! So he just went from... I said we were working with certain organizations to, well, we had communicated with and contacted those organizations. Does anyone, did any, does anyone buy that? If I, if I call up, what do you call it? The American Heart Association say, somebody picked up the phone and I go, hey, I'm thinking about giving you guys five bucks. And they go, okay, let us know. Can I then go, hey, we're working with the American Heart Association. No. No. I, of course not. That's a fucking absurdity. Being in contact with an organization is not the same as working with an organization. You said on multiple streams, we're working with these dementia charities, with these uh, schools, with these universities. And now you're telling us, well, we did contact them. Bro, what the fuck? Are you kidding me? That's insane. Not appropriate for me to make such statements when final actions had not yet been taken. Okay, good. So just, <laughs> he admits, hey, it wasn't right of me to say that, but he still has to explain, well, you know, we were thinking about working with them. I guess I shouldn't have said we were working with them, but, you know, I did contact. Bro, don't even mention that you contacted them. <laughs> just say, just say, look, I, I, I don't know what you say. Honestly, there is no good explanation. Uh, the better explanation, honestly, if I was you, I would have just lied. <laughs> a lie would have been better than what you ultimately came up with, which was, uh, you know, we contacted them. I felt like that was good enough, but clearly I was wrong. Jesus Christ. And a lot of the conversations that were had with various organizations involved the funds not being restricted or came with extremely high administrative costs. Look, any way you say this, action needed to be taken. And to that point, I'm sorry. I'm disappointed that I was not more straightforward regarding the foundation's timeline for making donations and that I made statements potentially implying donations were made when they had not yet been. Potentially implying? Look, dude, this guy is a fucking snake in the grass. That's it. 
I, I'm sorry I made statements potentially implying that donates. You didn't potentially imply anything. You said, we are working with this organization. Every dollar you give us is being donated. Who wrote this apology for you? It is so transparently fucking... This is like, again, this is, this is a joke of an apology. Well, I'm sorry if, you know, I made statements that potentially made it sound like we were actually going to donate the money. What I meant to say was we were going to let it rot away in a bank account for a decade. <laughs> what is this? And I apologize for all of this, but such inaction was not done for any selfish or malicious reasons. Why was it done? Why? I want to take this opportunity to apologize to any developers, publishers. Hold on. You just said it wasn't done for any malicious uh, opportunity. That, okay, we held on to the funds, uh, but, you know, we wasn't to do something bad, and we weren't going to steal them or whatever else. Okay, that's where you have to tell me why it happened. Okay, and, and again, this is the place where any normal human being, anyone who hadn't done, here's, here's the thing. The way he's talking makes me think something bad has happened. Okay, because a normal person would go, I really fucked up. You know, either I was too lazy to get off my ass and donate the money, or I thought it was somebody told me it was being donated, but they didn't communicate to me that it hadn't yet, or we screwed up the paperwork, or, you know, we just, I kept, I was indecisive about who to give it to. There's a million different explanations. Okay, and we're not getting any of them. It's just, yeah, we held on to the money, but don't worry, it wasn't for any bad reasons. Then what was the reason? What, what made that happen? And a normal person would, uh, the, the obvious explanation for any normal person would be to go, I'm a fuck up. I fucked up. Okay. I wasn't keeping track of the money. I thought it was being donated and it wasn't. I trusted my partners to donate it on my behalf and they were too slow to get it to them. I take full responsibility. I'm going to kick in an extra $50,000 to try and make it right. And ultimately I must again, admit that I don't know how to run a charity. I'm going to try and I'm going to stop trying to run a charity. Moving forward, if I want to donate to a charitable organization or have a charity fundraiser, I will work with an established charity rather than trying to run my own due to this colossal fuck up that I have created. Instead, it's well, you know, we didn't we we brought, we didn't do anything bad. I, the, the pro, I promise. Why'd the money not get donated, Gerard? That's what we want to know. Most importantly, I want to apologize to anyone who ever donated over the years who felt they were wronged or led astray by any of this. Dementia is an incredibly important cause. To shut me and up! My family, shut up! And so many of you at home, advocating for more awareness has been such an important part of keeping my mother's memory alive. As the open, how many? How many? All right. So let's see. We open with this talking about how his mom died. Sure. Then we get into dementia is very important to me because my mom died. Okay, that's twice in uh, four minutes, 30 seconds that you brought up your mom. How many more times are we going to ha have to hear about how Gerard's mom is dead and we should feel bad for him and uh, give him a pass on this obvious charity fraud? Let's find out. I would now like to take a deeper look and respond to some of the many accusations made. Much of this is going to be dry and complicated because we're dealing with business finances, tax-exempt nonprofits, the IRS, and legal issues. Okay. But serious allegations need a serious and thorough response. All right, this guy is talking mighty slow. I'm just going to kick it up to 1.25. If it's he sounds a little weird, uh, that's the reason. Let's start with the Open Hand Foundation's formation. When my mother passed away in 2013... Ding! Number three. We donated her brain and spinal cord to the same academics and doctors we worked with to further advance their research. There's a link in the description to her autopsy report that confirms her brain and spinal cord were both donated to science. Hey, that's fucking insane. Okay. <laughs> it's not insane that you donated your body to science. It's insane that you feel the need to provide an... Here's what you're going to see about this video. I can't even call it a skillful... This would be a skillful dodge... If you didn't have a million eyes on you, okay? If this was a smaller event, maybe you could have got away with this. You have the eyes of everyone on you, which means that guys are going to point out the various uh, obvious emotionally manipulative tactics. Like, you can get away with this trying to explain this to a dumb person. Dumb person goes, Gerard, you did wrong. And you go, well, here's evidence that we donated my mom's uh, body to science. Can you believe it? You know, my mother is truly dead. But you have... Uh, you know, hundreds, if not th thousands of people are looking into this. No one has ever accused your mother of not being dead, Gerard. 
Okay, we accept that your mother died of dementia. We don't need to see her autopsy. And the fact that her body was donated to science is kind of irrelevant. I think he's going to say that that was their first charitable donation was his mother's body. Again, irrelevant. We don't care about whether or not your mother's body got donated to science. We care about the $600,000 that you had rotting away in a bank account. Many crimes, especially fraud, go undetected. And unless you do something especially egregious on your filings, nothing will be flagged to the IRS. In saying that, however, these filings don't seem to be done properly, and they aren't even signed, which is definitely a legal requirement. In April 2016, after receiving confirmation of the foundation's termination of private status, the IRS had completed a randomized audit on the 2014 tax return and continued to allow the foundation to operate tax exempt, as it found nothing wrong with the foundation's filings. Additionally, the foundation files all their taxes electronically, which does not require a physical signature on the actual forms. Only e-file authorization forms that are sent from a certified public accountant for electronic signature. Not only is this legal, but it is the industry standard for filing taxes here in the United States. The audit letter is linked down below. Okay, so here, here's, this is... I always tell people, because I've had people who go, hey, I've experienced a problem. Uh, you know, there's a lot of controversy propping up. I want to address the controversy. I want to make a video about it. I want to issue an apology. What should I do? And I've watched people go, because here's, I've had people come to me and they go, I've made a three hour video uh, detailing the allegations against me and addressing them one by one. And I've told those people, cool, throw it in the garbage. And they go, why, why? It addresses all of this uh, nonsense or whatever else. And I go, you have one chance to convince the world, okay, that you did not fuck up, that this is a misunderstanding. Gerard is wasting money or wasting time explaining how e-filing works. Addressing, again, the idea that, uh, look, Carl went through... And he said, there's a lot of different discrepancies here. Okay. I've identified 40 different problems and here's some of them. One of them is that it looks like their tax forms weren't signed. And at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter if that's the way e-filing works. Okay. Carl has admitted, Carl made a follow-up video and he's like, you're right. Okay. I'll admit I got it wrong. You didn't need to put a signature on your e-file forms. But that's not the core issue here, Gerard. The core issue is not, you didn't sign this IRS documentation. $600,000, if not more, we people have tabulated the, the value of much more, and they say there's money you still need to donate. But let's be, let's be kind to you and say $600,000 was not donated. That's the only thing we care about. We don't care about how e-filing works. We don't care about what signature is where. You need to cut through the noise and convince me you've done something wrong. The fact that you're wasting a minute telling me how e-filing works tells me that you're dodging something. You're trying to focus on minutia. You're trying to focus on tiny minor errors that were made in the allegations against you. And you think that's going to be a valuable distraction. Someone goes, oh, there. See, they didn't understand that you don't need to, to sign the form if it's e-filed. Therefore, Gerard is innocent. I have seen people on Twitter, basically, when he put out this video, they said, aha, look, a, a fatal flaw in their argument. They said he needed to sign those papers, and they clearly don't understand any paperwork. Well, it's irrelevant. It doesn't matter. What matters is the $600,000 went missing. I don't care if you correctly filed your e-filed forms missing a signature. That is a dodge. Uh, I know what you're doing. You're trying to make this video long and boring so that people just get the basic gist. Then they go, well, you know, it's a he said, she said, and Carl made some errors, and therefore I don't need to look any deeper into it. Almost a good strategy, but it's not going to work on anyone with a brain. Onto donations. There are generally two types of donations, unrestricted and restricted donations. Most donations are unrestricted in nature. By being unrestricted, donations can go to anything. Research, administrative costs, travel expenses, salaries, or bonuses. Doesn't matter. Unrestricted donations come in the form of a donate link on a website, maybe a Twitch stream, or even a telethon. The Open Hand Foundation raised funds in an unrestricted manner with the intention to restrict a larger donation towards dementia research. Larger restricted donations ensure clear measures and direction, but can take time whereas unrestricted donations are often instantaneous and not tracked. So this is the argument he's, he's trying to make, is the reason we held on the money for so long is there's two types of donations. Unrestricted is you give your money to the charity, 
And that's it. It's their money, and they can do whatever they want with it. A restricted donation is you go to a charity, and you go, I'm going to give you this money, but you can only spend it on doctor salaries. I'm going to give you this money, but you can only spend it on this specific type of research. That's a restricted donation. His argument is, we wanted to make a restricted donation. We didn't want it to go to salaries, blah, 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 blah. Again, this is stupid. It's a stupid argument. If you were holding on to the money so that you could make a restricted donation, I believe the argument is that you want to make a large restricted donation. It's pointless to say, hey, this $20, you can only spend on dementia research. They're like, okay, then we just don't want it. We're, we either give us the 20 bucks or not. But if you have $500,000, they'll go, okay, sure, we'll only spend on this, 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 or this. But, dude, you're wor if you're talking about large established dementia charities, just give them the $500,000. I trust them to spend it wisely. Okay. Yes. It might go to travel expenses. Yes. It might go to paying, you know, part of some of their salaries or whatever, but that's just how big charities operate. At the end of the day, the more money they get, the more that will eventually trickle down to research and development, whatever else it is that you care about. As long as you, again, you said we were researching to see who to give it to in 10 years, you had time to find a charity that you trust and go, here's a big pile of money. Please make sure that you spend it wisely. The idea that, no, we had to, oh, we had to restrict the donation and then we had to figure out, and I don't want to, you know, I don't want to make sure, you know, what if it paid for like a, a birthday cake? I don't want to pay for birthday cakes. You know, I wanted to pay for dementia research. Shut the fuck up. You just needed to donate the money. This is a terrible explanation. A better explanation would be, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot and I was indecisive and I couldn't figure out how to give it to, and I just let it sit there and sit there and sit there until it became a big problem. And I take responsibility for that. I'm a moron. I'm an idiot. I fucked up. I hope someday you all can forgive me. I'm going to donate a little extra money to try and make it right. And I'm disbanding the charity because I don't know what I'm doing. That's what an adult would have done. Instead, you're trying to convince everyone. Hey, I told you. I told you every single time I talked about it. This money is going to charity. Every dollar is going to charity. We're working with this organization, this organization, this organization. Now you're telling me, well, we didn't work with them, but we talked to them. I gave them a phone call and I thought really hard about giving them the money. So that kind of justifies it. And also, you know, I don't want the money to go to something stupid. I want it to go to something cool. So I had to hold on to it. For that. This is a terrible fucking explanation terrible anyone who buys this is an idiot and the fact that so many other gaming youtubers jumped to his defense and said well that's a perfectly reasonable explanation i i understand when when i have thousands of people give me donations hoping to stop dementia of course i would sit on them and not give it to anybody until that makes perfect sense what the fuck is going on i hate people like this i hate these good guys who can't just fucking admit i fucked up I was fucking around. Who knows what I was planning to do with that fucking money? See, that's the problem. I don't believe you. I think you had something insidious planned for the money. But I still wish you had to just told me, I made a big screw up. I'm giving, getting rid of all the money. I'm giving it all to charity and it's over with. And don't, nobody has to worry about me anymore. I'm not going to run any more charities. That's what I wanted to hear. It said now I go, something insidious is going on. I would not be surprised if there was some sort of embezzlement. Okay, look, this is wild speculation. I have no evidence. I think somebody in this family fucked up. I think somebody in this open hand foundation was fucking around. And I think that this is a man who's running cover because he knows either he or someone in his family or his whole fucking family has done something illegal and he's desperate to try and explain it away so people stop digging into it. Could be wrong, okay? But this is not how an innocent man acts. This is crazy. However, there were real production costs when it comes to running this event. We paid for flights, hotels, appearance fees, supplies, food and catering, cost of good for merchandise, etc. All of that totaled just under $12,000. This is still an outstanding invoice as not everything has been received or paid yet. Income from Twitch subscriptions and bits, along with merchandise, have offset some of the production costs. So to say the money is missing is simply wrong. Gerard lied to the public and said that this money was going to charity and that he wasn't touching any of it. Uh, you can do bits, you can do subs, you can actually donate money. Um, if you are more like, I want a material thing, you can do a shirt, you can do a coin, it all goes to charity, it's all great. Bits, subs, it all goes to charity. YouTube memberships or YouTube super chats, anything that supports us is going to the foundation at the very end. That's where my it's all going to the foundation. Now, does he mean his own foundation? Does that mean it's going to open hand to pay for open hands? Here's the problem. He's not, he changes how he talks about it, okay? Honestly, if he said it all goes to the foundation, he would almost have plausible deniability to go, yeah, it goes to the organization, and the organization has costs. But a lot of the times he says it's all going to charity, to research.
Under all bits and subs, including Amazon Primes, uh, go towards the uh, the charity as well. So it's all... They all go towards the charity. Well, what do you mean? Your charity or towards the charities that people are trying to donate to? All pass through, all going for a good cause. Gift subs, memberships on YouTube, Super Chats, all that goes to the charity as well. And hey, if you want to get a t-shirt, all of the proceeds from the shirt also go to charity. Your primes, your gift subs, your bits, donations, all go to charity. We don't take any of it. Uh, he keep Okay, so that's the worst thing he says. He says, we don't keep any of it. We don't take any of it. We don't take, does he say we don't keep any of it or we don't take any of it? Your primes, your gift subs, your bits... Donations all go to charity. We don't take any of it. We don't take any of it. Yes, you do. You take it to pay for this event. Okay, you take it to pay everybody to fly in, to give them all a meal, to give them all a hotel room, whatever else. That's misleading the donors. Just why did you not just say it properly and say, look, it goes to our, some of it goes to operating costs, but beyond that, we do the best we can to make sure as much of it gets to charity as we possibly can. But you didn't say that, and that's why you legally fucked yourself. Okay, and let's be clear. You, all, these donations and these bits and whatever else uh, are raising upwards of $10,000 from donations and subs alone. Okay, uh, where's that money? Okay, because, you know, paying for a couple of hotel rooms and paying for a couple of plane tickets doesn't seem like you should need all the donation money and all the bit money and whatever else. There's talk of $125,000 being embezzled for unknown admin purposes. As previously mentioned, we went from a private to public charity, and under both nonprofit structures, we're legally obligated to spend money on expenses. With that said, it is perfectly legal to hold donations, and in fact, is not uncommon for organizations to hold their funds. Is is he saying that they were holding on to six hundred thousand dollars in anticipation of future administrative costs? Because if so, that's insane. I don't know exactly what he's getting at here, but Gerard, if you're holding on to money. Stop telling people all your money goes to charity. Here's the organizations we're working with. We've donated this. You said, look at this tweet. I raised a combined total of 600,750. I guess, I guess it's true that you raised it, or at least you are raising money, but you're not actually giving it to them. I raised it for them, but they didn't actually get it. Okay. And you obviously did not raise. That's the other thing. This is crazy. Why did you say you were raising $600,750,000 a year? Like, how do you, I want to say that like he mistyped this, but how do you mistype this drastically? $600,000, dollars a year. Again, I think this is just a guy who was high on the idea of like, I donate all this money to charity. I'm a great guy. When in reality, the money's just sitting in a bank account. It's not going anywhere. And, and now, you know, you're trying to obfuscate the issue by being like, well, we raised this much and this much. And, you know, they got the math wrong, whatever else. None of this matters. It's like I said, look, 20 minutes wrong. Just tell me we really just the core issue is why did you not donate the money? Why did it take so long? OK, all this stuff about money being unaccounted for and whatever else, you can settle that later if it be, if it really becomes an issue. OK, but the core issue is has always been. Why did you sit on the money? Why didn't you just donate it? Why did you need to wait until two guys showed up and asked you, like, hey, can you donate this money before it actually happened? Like, why? I'm a computer scientist, so I really, really urge anybody that has a uh, background in tax accounting for charitable organizations, or hell, if the IRS is watching this, one of the things that Carl brought up to me re very recently was the 5% rule, which again, this is a very complicated rule, but the idea is the US government expects foundations to use their assets to benefit society. Referencing that same rule mentioned in this claim, the foundation is actually not legally required to distribute a minimum of 5% a year in charitable donations, because once again, the Open Hand Foundation is a public charity. This means that the $600,000 that was donated did not incur any fees or is not subject to any tax penalties. To insinuate that the money was missing and that the penalties were to be applied and that my family or myself had to float the missing funds is just not true. Also, none of the money from the Open Hand Foundation has ever funded any of my projects for my company. I want to stress that not a dollar raised from Indyland and its supporters was ever used on anything to personally benefit me, my family, or any of our companies. Okay. So here's where we're going off the rails. <laughs> Look at his face. He's clearly upset. He's clearly upset. And here's the problem is he doesn't have a right to be upset. Okay. Gerard, you, you have the bearers. You have the most basic right to go. Look, these guys got some stuff wrong. Okay. And I'm not happy that they got some stuff wrong, 
Uh, and again, that's your word against theirs. I don't even know if they got anything wrong, but a lot of those videos have made it clear. As, as uh, Muda even said in the video, he said, listen, I'm not a tax expert. Somebody's brought up this idea of the 5% rule to me. Have they adhered to that rule? It's a very legitimate question for someone acting as a journalist or an investigator to act. To go, is this charity acting legally? Listen, I'm not a, a expert in charity, but I would hope somebody who knows more than me can reach out and tell me whether or not uh, they are adhering to that rule. So that was a perfectly reasonable thing to, for him to ask. And you're going, how dare he? How dare he? How dare he ask a question about my charity? Well, Gerard, the reason he's asking the question about your charity is because $600,000 were not donated. Okay? So at that point, when that money goes missing and you don't have a good explanation for it, we've heard your explanation that you gave to them on the call. It wasn't very good. You said, oh, in 2022, guys, I noticed the money wasn't there. And I said, I got to do something. But then I still didn't donate it for some reason because I, I don't know. I couldn't figure out who to give it to. Okay. So when you give a very flimsy answer, people are going to start trying to poke around, figure out what the actual answer is because you didn't give one. One of the potential answers it's not unreasonable. It's not like charity fraud doesn't exist. One of the potential answers is that you're fucking around, that you either stole the money or the money went missing or you lost the money or you invested the money in crypto and you didn't get enough money back. We don't know. Nobody knows. Only you know because you're the one with the money. And it is perfectly legitimate for the public to go, I'm not Jared's friend. I'm not Jared's uh, minder. I'm not his fairy godmother. I don't know what this man intends. I'm going to suggest that it's possibly fucked around. Okay? That's perfectly legitimate for them to ask. And you are currently scowling. You're you're angry. Look at your fucking face. You're like, how could they possibly suggest this about me? Don't they know that I'm a good guy? Don't they know that my mother is dead? How could, how on earth? Jared, $600,000 went missing. You're not allowed to have this indignant outrage over the situation. I'm the one who's, uh, you know, being hurt here. These evil journalists are, are besmirching my good name. That's your fault. You hid the money. Your reaction right now should be. Your reaction to them digging into your finances and looking at tax codes and whatever else, you should go, I understand their concern. I absolutely understand their concern. Okay, for me to hold on to this money, I can understand how that looks suspicious. I can understand how that could look like I'm trying to rip people off. I want to assure you guys that is not the case. Uh, and I want to thank these guys. That's what this video should want. This video should want, I need to thank Muda and I need to thank Carl Jobst. Because uh, they woke me up. They woke me up to the fact that all this time I was wasting trying to figure out how to donate the money and trying to make a restricted donation, all of this, at the end of the day, I was, I was allowing that money to sit around losing value, okay? I was not doing right by my fans. I was not doing right by the people who donated. I want to thank them so much from the bottom of my heart to waking me up. I was asleep. I was a fool. I was an idiot. And thankfully, these two brave men stepped up and we're going to make it right. I'm going to make it right. They've shown me the path. I'm going to donate this money. I'm going to stop pretending I know how to run a charity. And I'm going to do everything I can to make this situation right. Instead, indignant, angry, because he's exposed. And this is what I'm trying to say. The nice guy is a liar. Okay? Maybe maybe one out of 100 nice guys are true nice guys. But these the, the, the reality is most of these guys are going to tell you they're nice guys. They're nice guys. They care about everyone. They want to help charity. At the end of the day, you go, well, I think you fucked up. I think you fucked up. You took $600,000 in donations and you didn't get it to the right people. And they go, what the fuck? How could you fucking say that? How could you say that? Don't you know? Don't you know what I've done? Don't you know my mother's dead? And the fear, the anger, the rage, it's just, how could, why did you put out this video? <laughs> you look like a psychopath. How could they suggest I did something wrong? Cause you did. You might have not done that specific thing wrong. You might have a very good explanation for this 5% rule, but you did something wrong, okay? 
When somebody stabs somebody, you go, well, maybe they stabbed somebody else. When somebody steals from you, they go, maybe they've been stealing for a while. People are going to look into it. It's perfectly reasonable for them to look into it. Why are you so indignant and angry about the fact that anyone would question the great Gerard? You should say, of course it should be questioned. I should be flogged in the public square. I will give all of my tax documents and all of my public records. You deserve to know the truth. That should be your attitude. But instead, I think you have something to hide. And I think that's why you're mad. I think you're mad because you know you fucked up and you don't like the idea that anyone is asking questions about it. Saying that we are fraudsters, that what we are doing is illegal and constitutes charity fraud, that we are using my dead mother's name to potentially embezzle money and steal is categorically false. I should have been more transparent about the money not being donated. Yep. And that's on me. Yep. But my family and I have not done anything illegal. No but. You don't get a but. You don't get a but. You know, I should have been more transparent about the money, and that's the bottom line. That's it. I should have been more transparent. I shouldn't have made these outrageous claims. I should not have said every dollar is going to charity. I should not have said we were working with these organizations. I fucked up. I was wrong. You don't get a, but how dare they? You don't get that. You're not allowed that in this situation. You are not the victim here in any respect. I don't care that your mother's dead. I don't care that somebody suggested, hey, all that money went missing. I wonder if he took it. I, I don't care that that makes you feel bad. Well, I feel very bad that they, they would suggest that my, my family would embezzle money. Yeah, that sucks. The reason they think your family embezzles money is because you fucked up. It's not wrong of them to worry about where the money went when the money didn't go anywhere. Okay, it's just sitting there. You fucked up. You did something wrong. Okay? When you're standing there holding a bloody knife, you can't go, I don't know why they think I stabbed a lady. Well, because you got a bloody knife. Something fucking happened. We're going to ask questions about it. Maybe you are innocent. Maybe maybe you're innocent of many of the things that are leveled against you, but you still did something. So you don't get you don't get this this shield of how dare they? How dare they? How could they possibly question me, Gerard the nice guy? Everyone has the right to ask questions about this situation. And the fact that you're reacting this way makes me think that you actually did do something much worse than what we already know, but that'll come out. Furthermore, my family and I are in serious conversations with our legal teams regarding next steps as the allegations that have been made have been made with complete disregard for the truth of the matter. Good. These allegations were made by individuals who self-admittedly aren't even financial or legal professionals. Doesn't matter, irrelevant. I don't need to be a financial or a legal professional to go, hey, there's $600,000 sitting in a bank account. We don't know where it went. Makes me very curious. You're allowed to be curious as a human being. You're allowed to be publicly curious as a human being. You're allowed to make a YouTube video that goes, hey, it's really weird that a guy told me he's working with these organizations and there's no record of him working with these organizations. It's really weird that this guy is claiming he donates $600,000 to $750,000 charity every year when he hasn't donated the $600,000 that are sitting in this bank account. And it is very reasonable for these guys to go, listen, we are not tax experts. We are not legal experts. But here's the research we've done. And based on the research we've done, we think there is some impropriety here. We are urging people who do have that legal and technical expertise to dig into it because we want to know what happened. I don't think you have any legal case here. Has this hurt your reputation? Absolutely. But it's hurt your reputation based on things that you actually did. Okay. You lied about organizations you were working with. You took donations without getting them to the organizations you claimed you were working with. And, and, and you just, you're just lying constantly and, and subverting the truth and using your, your mother's corpse as a fucking shield against criticism. And all you had to do, again, could have made a three-minute video. Three-minute video. Guys, it's come to my attention that this money was not donated. This is entirely my fault. I had other guys I trusted to donate the money, but clearly uh, they misled me, and I am I am overwhelmed with dismay to learn that all this money we've been raising has not been making it into charity. This is a horrible lapse in oversight. It is a huge mistake on my part. And though, again, I was just trying to do the right thing and get this money to charity. Ultimately, I failed and I must take responsibility. As such, I have made steps to make sure all of the money is being donated. I'm going to add another $50,000 to offset the depreciation of all of your money. I know that I have greatly disappointed my fans and all of the great creators I've worked with on IndieLand. This is a huge stain on my record, but I want you to understand that I had the best of intentions and that I do truly care about dementia research. Moving forward, I will not be operating my own charity. I will instead use my large platform and my fan base to direct attention to other great dementia charities that are clearly much more equipped to deal with these donations than I am. I only hope from the bottom of my heart that I can someday earn back your respect. I want to thank 
uh, Carl Jobst and Muda for helping wake me up and make me realize this horrible oversight and this great mistake that I have made. And I want to do everything I can to make sure I never make a similar mistake again. I fucked up. I was wrong. I was the mistake. I made the mistake. There is nothing I can do except to try and move forward and make things right. And that is my pledge to you, the American consumer. That's the statement you make. Here's the statement Gerard made. Yeah, I didn't donate the money. And yeah, I lied about all the organizations. Yeah, I lied about this, 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 and this. But I did sign my tax forms correctly. And fuck these guys for asking any questions about me. I think I'm going to sue them. This is the worst possible fucking way he could have handled this. I, it would have been so easy to save his reputation by just taking responsibility, admitting he did something wrong, and promising to fix it. That's it. That's your basic apology. This indignance. This indignance. And here, the, the indignance is hilarious. Uh, indignance, whatever. It, it's hilarious because it comes from this, the nice guy. The nice guy mentality. The guy who goes, why don't they understand what a nice guy I am? How could anyone ever question me? I help people. I'm a good guy. I help people all the time. Do I sometimes take a little for myself? Sure. Do I sometimes tell people their donations are going to some things and spend them on other things? Sure. Do I sometimes lie about organizations I'm working with? Well, who doesn't lie sometimes? But at the end of the day, I'm a good guy. I don't deserve this. I don't deserve to be questioned this way. How dare they question me? A nice guy. We all make mistakes. We all bend the truth a little bit. How dare I be raked through the public square? That's not a nice guy, folks. That's a psychopath. That's a sociopath. That's a guy who's got a million excuses, but can't just own up to what they did. And that's why I'm ultimately infuriated by this video. And I'm infuriated by the whole influencer YouTube culture in general. It's all psychopaths. It's all psychopaths and weirdos who think it's okay for them to lie, cheat, and steal. And then anyone who questions them uh, needs to be dealt with. As Gerard is now threatening legal, uh, legal uh, repercussions for the two heroes who woke him up to the fact that he needed to donate that money and he needed to donate it now. He should be thanking them. These allegations are slanderous, and we believe we're done with selfish intent. They have directly jeopardized the safety of me, my staff, and my family, oh, and that is not okay. I want to reiterate and specifically oh, address my staff. that both the Foundation and I have been accused of forgery, embezzlement, and charity fraud. Yeah. The allegations imply the Foundation forged tax returns because they weren't physical signatures on them when we e-filed them, or that we altered numbers to hide income or expenses. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. They ask questions. You have you have answers for the questions. Good. Okay. But they had every right to ask those questions because you've been fucking around. We can account for every single dollar received and spent in the last nine years. We do not have anything to hide. And due to the overwhelming amount of people He's, who have been instructed to file complaints to the IRS and Department of Justice, we understand an audit may be coming and we welcome it. Our legal and financial teams have assured us that we have done nothing criminally wrong or illegal. Any possible issues in our paperwork can only be described as clerical errors and are easily amendable. Content creators and influencers should be held accountable when faced with serious allegations. However, yeah, you should be held accountable. The narrative can get taken so far away from the truth that the court of public opinion supersedes fact. I recognize and take accountability for all of my actions. No, you don't. That's the fucking problem. Taking accountability is not this. You're not taking accountability. This entire video was telling us about how you don't deserve to be questioned. You're a nice guy. How could anyone suggest that you've done anything wrong? Well, because you did. You fucked around. You said you said blatant lies. I'm sorry if I misled you. You didn't mislead us. You lied. You lied. You took people's donations. You didn't donate them. And accountability is going, I fucked up. I fucked up. I was wrong. It all falls on me. Accountability is not, well, they said I didn't uh, sign a form, but I did sign a form. So, like, I don't even think anybody, like, they're the bad guys here. This is categorically insane. It is insane that he put out this statement. It is insane the fucking rage with which he faces the, the smallest of questions. Hey, Gerard, why didn't you sign this tax form? How the fuck could you ask me that? This is an insult against my family and my dead mother. 
And it is insane that he is surrounded by sycophants and losers, other little fucking ankle grubbing uh, YouTubers who desperately want to suck up to this guy because he's got 1.6 million subscribers and they go, well, I met Gerard at an event and he was really nice to me and he gave me some advice on YouTube. I I've known Gerard. He invited me to Indyland and it was really cool and he bought me a cheeseburger. I don't understand why everybody's being so mad to him. This, this culture is insidious. This culture is fucked. You people are fucked. I shouldn't swear so much. But stop believing these people. He's showing you who he is right fucking now. He's showing you. This is the real him. A man who, when faced with the fact that he misled his entire audience and lied to them for a decade, goes, woe is me. How could anyone question me? I will sue all of you for daring to question me. The mask is off. That's it. And anyone defending this man after watching this video is a fucking crazy person. Guys, I want to remind you, Carl Jobst and Muda, some ordinary gamers, are the heroes of this situation. Gerard is the categorical villain. I urge you to subscribe to Carl Jobst. I urge you to subscribe to some ordinary gamers. Both of these men deserve accolades and medals and ribbons, and they deserve a parade in the fucking town square for exposing a liar and a fraud, and that's it. I don't know how anyone can claim that Muda and Carl Jobst are the villains of this situation after watching the frothing rant from this psychopathic individual. I don't get it. We live in a sick time where sick men are given a constant fucking reward and praise and believe they can do no wrong. Well, you did wrong, Gerard. You got to own up to it. And this is not how you own up to it. And frankly, all of this backlash. Oh, I can't believe people are mad at me. Why would people unsubscribe from my channel? I can't. You don't get to play the victim here. You did wrong. And this is not taking accountability. I'm not even going to watch the last minute of this because I don't care. Well, guys, if you watched that whole video, thank you. Obviously, we ran a bit long, but I got a lot to say on this. And uh, I don't think this is the last we're going to talk about this. There was, there was video clips I want to play. There's audio clips of this guy. He is a psychopath and a manipulator. And uh, I cannot I cannot believe that he, he ripped the mask off as much as he did. I'm thankful he did, though. Because I, I'm, I'm, I hope you see something like this and you go, you know what? I'm going to stop trusting these guys when they tell me how great they are. I'm going to stop trusting these guys when they say, give me your money. I'll donate to charity. I love you, blah, blah, blah. Be a little more choosy about who you trust. Okay, somebody tells you, hey, I, I try to be a good guy, but I got flaws. I'm not the best. I lose my temper, whatever else. Trust that guy before you trust a guy who goes, I'm great. I'm great, and I love you. And I'm going to make, I, by being a part of my fan base, you know, you're a good person, too. And we're just good people. We're all helping each other out. Not everybody is Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers got to do that. I believe Mr. Rogers was truly a good guy. Gerard is no Mr. Rogers. We got more videos coming soon. If you have not subscribed to the channel, check it out. Don't forget my comic book, Super Killer, coming soon. Check it out at superkiller.org. Make sure you pre-order to get yourself a first edition copy, uh, and you're going to get rich. Okay, I'll make my little pitch now. Buy my comic. It's going to be worth a million dollars in 10 years. 10 years from now, first edition copy, you're going to make a million dollars. Okay, see, I can make, I can lie to the audience too, Gerard. The difference is I take responsibility for it. It's not going to be worth a million dollars. It'll be worth half a million though. Bye.